Hi there, welcome to my YouTube channel. This is Tina from TinaHills.com and we are very close to Halloween which is tomorrow and uh, this is the tarot forecast for tarot and astro forecast for all the 12 signs of the zodiac so don't forget to check your sign, moon and ascendant signs and uh, I hope my sound is okay. Um, so let's get straight to it. Uh, I'm going to use different decks today because I'm always using the giant Rider and Wade Smith deck. Another thing I want to mention is all most of our, uh, the tarot readers, they keep saying Rider and Wade. But I think we should also mention Smith because Pamela Smith is the illustrator of the deck. And without her, we wouldn't have these wondrous images to uh, work with. The Tarot is everything that happens in life, seen and unseen, everything experienced in life uh, that we can explain and that is inexplicable, everything is depicted in the Tarot. All these images are archetypal and they take us back to the very essence of experience, okay, behind phenomena. And we can, through these images, explore the noumena of the, the, the cause of the effect. Okay, so let's get straight to it. I'm going to use the Paulina Tarot deck because it's surreal and it's wondrous and it's beautiful. And I'm also going to use uh, the Lover's Tarot, which is uh, uh, gorgeous since all the major arcana only. With two extra cards, 24 cards, uh, you know, 22 ma um, uh, major arcana images. And we've got two extras and... Um, let me show them to you before we continue and just straighten all this out because I don't really want to play with charity. This is an extra one. So uh, this is about sacrifice, okay? Sacrifice because you see the, how the pelican, she opens up her breast and she feeds her uh, child. Um, so this is a very powerful symbology of sacrifice, of untold love, of... Um, great depth and the other one is fortune so a uh, faith sorry and faith is very very powerful because this is about not having faith in the externals only but it's about having faith within okay so we're going to use this um archetypal cards uh, the 24 cards this time it's going to be with this at uh, the love tarot it's very amazing to read do love readings especially twin flame readings with this deck and it never disappoints it just never disappoints because hope is the return of love actually i am gonna get there if you pick the card for anybody but let us uh get polina deck out right and i have saved them with palo santo already they are right here and I've been playing with them, preparing uh, to tell you the story of what's going on this month. And uh, they are ready to tell us messages, give us messages, for of swords, period of solace immediately. So um, a time of solace before we leap into action, we've been hurt. So that was the foundation card that it just uh, fell out. So let's get straight to uh, Aries, Aries Sun Moon Ascendant. Uh, what can we expect for you? Uh, Aries Sun Moon Ascendant. Uh, let's connect to the heart chakra with the cards as I normally do and always say something. Um, I always liked, not always, but most of the time I call upon Manjushri Bhutta and my personal uh, Bodhisattva that I work with, that is Sangye Menla. Sangye Menla is very similar to Archangel Raphael, although their colors are different. Raphael is emerald green and Sangye Menla is this lapis lazuli blue. But if you know, uh, Raphael is called the medicine of God. It means, it literally means medicine of God. And uh, Medicine Buddha Sangye Menla is the medicine for humanity and he is a divine medicine. So you see for healers like us, we invoke uh, Medicine Buddha and Archangel Raphael. So I would like to close my eyes for a moment, call on the spirits, call upon the spirits 
and uh, because this this time with some Wayne and Halloween and Bhutja Dirdashi in India, the ancestors and the ghouls and ghosts and spirits are all out there, and they are uh, the veil is thin, so they are looking to make contact with us. So we can just close our eyes and fall upon uh, the emerald color. Imagine, visualize the emerald color of Archangel Raphael, and um, we can send him love and. Uh, gratitude for being there for helping us and we can summon him and invoke him by saying oh Archangel Raphael please guide this reading may we get uh, the the messages that people need to hear and may it be for their highest good and high and may they uh, evolve in spirit with these messages that has always been my work not just to understand astrology to row and other healing modalities but to work with them make them living tools so uh, you know mercury's already stationed retro and mercury will go retrograde tomorrow so this is again it fell four of swords can you believe this so i'm going to leave this card out anyway and i'm going to meditate on the four of swords so fours are about foundation so let me get explain a bit of this before we move on because i think spirit wants me to talk about four of swords four of swords is an iffy card okay four of swords um four of cups if you think about it if he if he can okay and a four of swords swords are intellectual swords have to do with people in in big positions okay like judiciary legal fours are by foundations and it's about a, a time of convalescence if you ask me when you are tired when you've been uh, sort of beaten by beaten down by life and you seek that time of convalescence before you can move on to your next uh, on to your journey you know before you can move on so this is a, a period of thought a period of contemplation which is so beautiful because um, mercury is going retrograde from tomorrow so without it missing that that part so if you need to just calm down and sit back down and contemplate then do so all right so aries what can we see for you call to god my medicine buddha his mantra is teate om bekanze bekanze maha bekanze bekanze radya samungate soha and we have ten of pentacles so very good very very good for you i see a beautiful cycle of uh, completion with your finances if you've been feeling stuck if you've been feeling down in the dumps about your career about and so much is going on in your 10th house with capricorn there Believe me, this conjunction that we are headed to will change your work life and how you've been, uh, how you've projected yourself in the world and how people perceive you. Because I'm in heaven where all this is happening for you. So uh, Aries, beautiful. November seems like a really, really good month for you. And um, tents are all about completions and the start of something new, if you ask me. Because one and zero are binaries. So uh, codes are made of binaries. You know, Of course, now you have quantum computers. But previously, everything was binary, ones and zeros. So we say we are also information, binary information, ones and zeros. The scientists think we live in a simulation. So does Elon Musk, of course. But uh, we sort of do, but uh, let's talk about it in some other video. All right, now from the love to roll. I just absolutely love this deck. Let's see what I have for you guys. The tower in reverse, but I don't really want to read the reverse of the love tarot because, you know, I just don't want to. I'm going to, I'm okay with reading the reverse from the Paulina deck, but not from this. So, uh, the tower moment, it's, it's, uh, a moment of change. It's a moment of, um, great, um, uh, discomfort if you ask me if there's something that you've been avoiding 
uh, it's going to come crashing down if people have been uh, not authentic or if you've not been authentic everything will be exposed right now okay it's all out there the tower card is like a uranian thunderbolt and you aries you also have chiron in your sign and chiron in your sign has actually made you um very contemplative it's made chiron more of a go-getter but it's made you more contemplative about life about experiences and how healing comes from those experiences so the tower for you with the ten of pentacles i mean very conflicting if you ask me but don't think so i mean i don't think so because traditionally this would be considered conflicting how can there be a tower moment and there be ten of pentacles no it of course it means you've got to end what you need to end but it also means that after every end and comes a new beginning so this is very platonic and we've just had this new moon in, uh, in uh, Scorpio and we've got Venus of course is moving into Sagittarius so check the correct date so she is in Sag till November 25th but I don't remember the 8th of November she, uh, Venus is moving into Sagittarius and uh, it's, it's going the vibe is going to change this deep uh, soul penetrate and mercury will of course be here for three months or so usually mercury is after three weeks but um, this is your eighth house so spouses money your money inheritance tax all of this you know it could be reworked realigned repurposed refurbished all of that but don't take this as a conflicting message from spirit this is a halloween read so it's a very special reading where whereby we've invoked Archangel Raphael and we've invoked uh, Medicine Buddha, one of the greatest bodhisattvas of the, from vagina tradition and in the love department Aries. Uh, yes, even though it's a dark moment and uh, there's some beautiful something, maybe getting married, this could be the one and you decide to get married because you know the Ten of Pentacles oftentimes leads to a committed uh, relationship marriage you know if you ask me so if you've been coming to this reading with the uh, relationship issue in mind then i would say that changes will have to be made to this relationship that you're thinking about uh maybe compromises maybe uh, maybe you're being too headstrong maybe they're being too headstrong there's something definitely that needs to go because it is the tar moment but then something is urging me to tell you that this is beautiful this this relationship if you can make it work because this person could very very well be your twin flame or so man now moving on to taurus taurus we've just had uh, the new moon in your polarity so relationships were probably challenged because Scorpio is the seventh house from Taurus and, and when you have like Venus and Scorpio and Taurus Scorpio is actually very very sexual very very um, visceral in, in a way Taurus is more um, you know physical uh, Scorpio is more soul penetrating more spiritual energy it is a sign of the disciple after all and um, so things in your seventh house and Venus moves into your eighth house, all right, that's nice. Uh, you could expect some money from other people, funds to be cleared. But Mercury, they're going retrograde in your seventh house. I do see uh, maybe issues cropping up with your relationship that you just cannot, you know, talk about and solve as of now. Because no matter how you want to put it into words, it just doesn't come through, right? And you have, of course, Taurus, let's not forget you've got Chiron in your 12th house of Aries. So this is some major energy that's happening in the house of your ancestors. And you're housing Uranus, okay? And the planet that is a planet uh, of surprises, the, the planet that is a wild card. So uh, tons of stuff going on, this um, Uranus and this um, Chiron sextile, semi-sextile is... Uh, really intense and it's it's going on for a while actually with Chiron and uh, Uranus having this conversation through Chiron was in Pisces and then moved on to Aries and Uranus was in Aries and now moved on to Taurus so this is uh, something this these two celestial bodies are discussing and something is coming up for us and um, we have a full moon of course that's coming up it's going to be glorious it's on the 12th 
it's on the 19th degree and it is aligned with west uh, uh, conjunction with west uh, the asteroid of home and hearth so there's a lot of peaceful energy with you creative energy if you know how to make it work in negotiations even not just r romantic relationships even with uh, your partners you know your business partners so let's see what spirit wants you to know seven of wands okay so seven of wands is again not one of the favorite cards of the deck for most people and most readers because seven of wands if you ask me is about you preparing for something okay and you've been hurt and you've been challenged and you've been Think of seven of cups again, too many options, futility, even seven of wands. It's like too much has happened and you can't uh, be free of all those thoughts and emotions. It's like you're being trapped into that and you are being forced into a period of waiting. Sevens are very eccentric, don't forget that. There's this period of waiting that you're going through where you feel like, you know, you can be attacked and... Um, I do sense that because there's this so much going on with your seventh house and Uranus in your sign and Uranus was bang opposite this new moon that just happened. So for the next 15 days, I see um, a suppressed rage that could pop up within you. Remember, once are creative. So this, this period could be an eccentric time of creativity as well for you, Taurus. Don't forget that. Energy works both ways. You can make... Um, a mountain out of a molehill or you can do something really powerful with this energy okay so you're gonna have to keep that we had a, uh i think i put it back so let's look from the love tarot okay let's see what you have and not necessarily love if you're not looking for love but you're very <sighs> virgo the card of virgo so with the Hermit, I see a sense of you withdrawing because you're the Seven of Wands. As I said that, it's it's like you're preparing yourself, like you've creatively reached a, a, a point where you know, realize that this project needs to grow, to see light. Because don't forget Seven of Wands and Swords. Sevens are always about strategy, research. So the Hermit is you taking that time to think of you know if things are a certain way why are they a certain way okay so maybe even a connection with someone who's virgo okay as it could be saturn a symbol of saturn in your life okay and almost in your ninth house saturn's in your ninth house uh, this great conjunction that deals with foreign places and foreign people and Overse overseas travel it's quite intense doors if you ask me so i see children children being even the hermit card goes very well with this because maybe because of of your children you've been secluded away from the dating scene or maybe you don't trust uh, anybody too much to let them um, into the life of your children there's definitely something that's going on over there children children think of why this card popped up because they're definitely affecting your love life in some way and it's bothering you honestly okay it's not something you can easily let go okay moving on that card just fell out for you gemini so i'm going to just stick with it again a seven a seven of cups i just spoke about it too many options, Gemini, and with you, there's always too many things and too many ideas and too, many, too much that you want to do and, and nothing gets done. So don't waste that opportunity. Don't waste that um, that thing you need to do that uh, maybe even a person, maybe you're dating so many people that you are um, now the person they are soulmate walks you by or maybe even your twin flame connection because don't forget you've got tons happening in your 12th house. With Uranus being in your 12th house of ancestors. Can you imagine that? And of course, Gemini, Cancer being your second house. You put the North Node. So there are new ways you're figuring out your resources. The tons of things happening with you, uh, Gemini. And of course, we are going to have uh, the, the lunations in the Sagittarius and uh, the Gemini polarities next after we are done with this 12th um, 
Victorian uh, full moon, a uh, conjunct red star. You're gonna, of course, have Gemini activation and a uh, very special aspect with Mercury that happens only 13 times a century. Check it out. Uh, I will not go into the astronomy of it, but you can check it out. There's a very rare event that Mercury is going through, and Mercury is your ruler who is now retrograding in Scorpio. <laughs> it's your sixth house, Gemini, sixth house of health. Okay, and um, uh, it's uh, it's your eighth house, Gemini. Okay, and uh, we are going sixth house. Sorry, we are going to see a lot of changes, a lot of changes, done loads of changes with your daily activities. It's your sixth house. I keep thinking of uh, Aries. I don't know why. Mm, uh, so let's call upon spirit and see what we have for you, Gemini. Six house is also the house of hidden enemies. So, you know, Mercury going retrograde there, Venus there. Take care of your health. And how's your health being? Are you smoking like a maniac, Ace of Cups? A new emotional beginning. And that is so beautiful because very soon Venus goes into your seventh house, Sagittarius. I think eight of this upcoming month november so expect november to be a fun filled month for you so venus is finally in your seventh house yes, mars is going to move into the sixth house mars being a malefic and the sixth house being a problematic house uh yeah take care of your health take, take care of accidents but yeah something is really changing within you within the way you may want to commit to someone you know you may want to have an ace of cups is, is almost like the goddess's blessing for some of you it's pregnancy for some of you it's a realization of a creative idea and it's starting to take shape if you want to write that blog you're going to write it now if you want to make those videos you're going to do them now ace of cups my god that is so beautiful it is one of my favorite cards of the tarot so moving on to um love tarot let's see or you gemini the november the fool i'm not reading reverse it was reverse but i'm reading straight ups okay so it's a new beginning ace again new beginning do you see how a message is how spirit how archangel raphael and medicine both are guiding us through this whole reading so a new beginning something new the, the fool is the soul and the soul comes into incarnation and knows nothing and the fool is going to be hurt many times maybe even fall off the precipice but this is the archetype of the fool to start new things to see new uh, places to experience new stuff that's why and, and this is your sign this is your archetypal signature actually energy signature gemini the fool is very powerful for you ace of cups emotion something that you know you're not great at so something to consider there gemini cancerians uh, oh love 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 from doreen's our dear doreen virtue our very favorite doreen virtue past life relationship this this is beautiful this ace of cups tells me that somebody somebody from your past is coming back into your life and there is no avoiding it that may feel like new but it's not because it is a very uh, ancient a relationship very very ancient relationship but what can i say gemini it's gorgeous it's beautiful go for it and now moving on to uh cancerians what to say cancerians um scorpio is your fifth house of romance and um children and creativity and all of that and things have been really uh, spicy there because we've just had Venus and all the planetary bodies. We've had the new moon there. And things have been, you know, interesting to say the least, right? 
So, uh, and you have a North Node in your sign. Don't forget that. And Venus now will move into your sixth house. So probably bringing in a lot of um, abundance into your work. Maybe even a, a, a promotion. Okay, sixth house, maybe you have uh, an enemy and who's somebody who just dislikes you, but because Venus is now in your sixth house, you become friends. Okay, because Venus is a benefic, definitely the lesser benefic, because Jupiter is the greater benefic, but Venus is a benefic, no doubt. And she's our sensibilities, our sensitivities, what we are attracted to, what we desire. And 6th house, yeah, 3rd, 6th and 12th houses are iffy. But believe me, Venus moving into your 6th house should give you maybe some respite because of some uh, uh, physical ailment that has been troubling you. And you finally find a solution, Cancerians. Not node is in your sign. So you're gonna, like, be revved up. You know, you're gonna be revved up, revved up. What can you expect? 2019. Ah, November. The card of Capricorn. Your polarity. Your seventh house. Devil. Now, whenever the devil pops up in a relationship, it's not like you're doing devil worship. Or <laughs> someone close to you is the devil. No, it means you're slavishly addicted to something. It could even mean focus. Okay, a obsession of some kind compulsion of some kind this is uh, Capricorn in the Druid deck this, uh, the, 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 the devil is Sir Nunos, it is Pan so there is a very sensual uh, aura to this and there is so much happening in your 7th house cancer with this great conjunction that is coming up things are going to change forever in the way you see your relationship whatever was solid will stay, whatever was bogus will be washed away so you know, what are you slavishly attracted to? Is it an interpersonal relationship that is self-sabotaging? Is it destructive? Is it uh, destroying you from within? You know, or maybe because you really want to mummy somebody, you are scared to be alone, and you don't want, you don't want to say no. If that is the case, then okay, the chariot. Very, very clear. This is the card of Cancer as well. Chariot. Do you understand? See how synchronicity works. We are doing the astro and the tarot reading for Cancer. And we've got Chariot, which is the card of Cancer. All the major arcanas are kind of speaking to us, the archetypes, and reinforcing what we need to do. So wherever there's slavish enslavement, okay, either you feel completely hooked to something which is destroying you or you're putting money somewhere where you don't need to uh, answers are coming but you need to go ahead but don't forget the chariot the horses need to be fastened and you've got to run the horses because you know, if, if, there, if there's no one to guide the horses they go anywhere okay it's also the, the black horse and the white horse are dualities okay it's, it's the duality personified and it's also two pathways which way are you going to go? This doesn't necessarily mean good or evil, but it means that two pathways. With the charioteer, with the will of his mind, if you see, the charioteer does not even have brains. So it's all psychic. So there's some tremendous psychic movement that is going to um, have to be done by you if you need to get over this obsession, this compulsion. For some of you, this Capricornian card means seventh house something a seventh house of relationship partnership oriented that you need to take action and you've got to decide there's a choice in front of you you've got to choose it's your card now in the romance department what can we expect for you cancerians tons of change of course and again we have children so here we've got children again cancer i think we have this for taurus so Something about children and something about not being able to bring your children into your relationship. If it's too early, don't push anything. Just go slow. But understand why you feel like your children are in some way responsible for you not having a love life. Or maybe in some way they're interfering or maybe there's a clash that's going on. So, I send you Reiki. I send you love, Cancerians. 
figure it out. The North Node or Rahu is in your sign. It happens once in every 19 years. So, yeah. Leo, Leo, Leo. This card just popped out for you. Ten of Swords. I'm going to just leave it out as a foundation for Leo. 2019, November. A very painful cycle is finishing. Uh, uh, deeply traumatizing. Deeply um, wounding cycle is ending. You will be able to reset that button. Look at that. We've got the God of Leo. Strength. If there ever was uh, a sign that higher energies are guiding this reading, you see how the cards are popping up for each sign. It always happens with me. So, uh, Ten of Swords, right? It's a very painful, very, very destructive cycle coming to an end. It's about you taming that inner beast. Are you really getting over grief? To enjoy what's coming or you even getting over suspicion uh, strength is is if you see this woman is taming the lion the animal within uh, it speaks of the eight the ego and the super ego the eight is the animalistic self of the lion okay the woman is the 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 conscious mind and of course the man is the conscious mind actually and the woman is the uh, super conscious so uh here we have definitely Something within you that needs to be tamed. Something within you that needs to be, uh, that needs to be maybe allowed to bloom without any kind of negative self-talk. Something is ending. And if you have the strength, something beautiful will begin in its place. I can guarantee you that. Now, Leo, 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 what do you have for you? In the Emperor. God varies. So this is definitely about structure, stability, hard work, discipline, fortitude. And uh, strength and emperor together tell me that, yes, this could also be some of you looking for a romance. You can meet an Aries person, very, you know, um, suave, very outspoken, you know, likes to stay you down, you know, can can be a, a, a very passionate, libidinal lover. So that's good. That, that sounds good. For those of you that are looking at the archetypal energy, it's about you be bringing structure. So you bringing structure into this life, I think if you have the strength to conquer whatever you need to conquer, to befriend whatever it is that you need to befriend, then this painful cycle will end and you will become the emperor of your own life. And, and it's not just about control, it's about when you relinquish that control, do you really see how futile it is to, to want to control anyone. It, it doesn't make sense. It actually holds our soul's progress. So those of you Leos that feel like, okay, my love life's not going anywhere, <laughs> tons of stuff is happening, believe me, believe me, tons of stuff. And Scorpio is your fourth house, the foundation. So yeah, things have been pretty intense in your fourth house of family, Leo. Uh, but yeah, you can, with Venus moving in to your fifth house, a lot of romance, uh, interesting people can come into your life, foreign people, people from far away, even if they belong to your culture, they may not traditionally adhere to your culture, so stay optimistic, you are manifesting something beautiful, something very beautiful, okay, now Virgo. Virgo, Sun, Moon, Ascendant. What do we have for you, Virgo? May Archangel Raphael and Medicine Buddha. The Emerald Green and the Lapis Lazuli Blue colors guide us. Okay, Virgo. The Tower. Okay, I'm Virgo. <laughs> so, yeah, something is, uh, a shock is coming your way. Something in November is going to shock you, and it doesn't have to be negative. It doesn't have to be something that shocks you negatively. It can be a um, few changes, maybe even movement, some other place, some other job, something that um, sort of you know that feels traumatic to you. But believe me, every single time I've got the tower card, I have not. Yes, there's been initial trauma with it. But it's always been a Kundalini opening experience. If you ask me, the moon is the god of Cancerians. 
and Cancer is your 11th house, Virgo. So something's definitely up with um, your 11th house of communities, larger communities. Maybe you're writing a blog and maybe, you know, something happens and, you know, people are not reacting to it the way they, they want, they should, I mean, according to what you think. Um, or maybe in your workplace, people are not noticing what you're doing. And 11th house is actually a very benefic house. And the moon, the moon card is everything menstrual, everything feminine, everything intuitive, imaginative. So uh, maybe some news is going to come through the internet, which is again also 11th house. And um, yeah, something phenomenal because see, again, third house is activated for you, Scorpio. So all these goings on in Scorpio with Mercury now going retrograde there. You have Mars, of course, in your second house. Virgo, Mars is going to move into your third house. And you had Venus sitting in your third house of communication. Third house links up to the 11th house. So you can expect some uh, interesting news, maybe something intuitive, maybe a connection also. This could also be secrets for some of you, okay? If there's anything hidden, it can come out. And... Uh, the tower moment so if you're, if you're having an affair online uh, it could come out okay Virgo I'm not but if you are and you're a Virgo then you know what, what's going on codependency tells me this is very relationship oriented your seventh house is Pisces yeah. and your fifth house Virgo is Capricorn oh my god and everything is going on in capricorn right now everything is happening in your fifth house of romance and creativity so if you are in a codependent relationship i think my leg just fell asleep so if you're in a codependent relationship it is time to release it it's time to realize that this codependent relationship is harming you more than um is doing any anything good for you that could be the tower moment when your reality slips by you can even find out you know your partner's having an affair and the moon is secrets lies the seed sometimes but don't forget the moon is such an iffy card because it represents uh, the feminine the feminine has been uh, denigrated by the patriarchy you know called deceitful manipulative uh they keep secrets yeah so then again you know we have to revise meanings uh, as we go along in the new age with new ideas with with new people so moving on to libra yes this is a, a sort of a longer reading than what i usually do but let us connect on a deeper level you know how i i love doing this youtube sorry youtube videos and I miss doing them actually when I'm not doing them. So, uh, all right, Libra, this is so for you. Page of Wands, <sighs> somebody younger, more exciting. A uh, fire sign comes into your life, or it could be a text, or it could be even an invitation to go someplace. And Page of Cups, two pages. It could uh, adolescent, someone who's um, not yet an adolescent actually, is a child. A water sign and fire sign. And it could be your own children, um, Libra, and uh, you're maybe going out, going for a holiday with them, or maybe, uh, I don't see any conflict, so, so Spirit's not telling me there's any conflict, but there could be the need for you to really um, understand them. It could be nieces and nephews, or even uh, subordinates in school or college, and you've got to really help them out with some project. Page of Wands is new creative ideas. Somebody who brings something creative. And Page of Cups is emotions. You know, it's a new... Um, somebody comes... Look at that card. Uh, this, the page is here with, with a beautiful chalice. And it's um, throwing around all these beautiful stars. Symbolic of knowledge and wisdom and emotions and love and all of that. So two pages. Interesting. And it's a card of Cancer, Libra. So, yeah, I mean, it's pretty, pretty, pretty in intense, whatever's going on, because it's about going ahead. Don't forget that. Mm, Virgo is your 12th house, and uh, I mean, Leo is your 11th house, and uh, Cancer is, of course, your midheaven, and uh, there's a lot of 
movement now happening in Cancer. Okay, with the North Node being there, and with, I don't forget any time planets reside in a sign, the polarity gets activated. So with all these Capricornian planets, Cancer is heavily activated, and of course we have Rahu Ketu, North and South Node in Cancer Capricorn. This is a Cancerian era, actually, if you ask me. So looking at that, you know, what do you see? What do you hear? Uh, you're mid heaven. What do you get from it? Uh, maybe. Maybe you have a team and you're working really hard and you have to leave the team, Libra. You have to leave the team, okay? Um, things are going to be quite fantastic for you. After all, Gemini is your 11th house, so over there we are going to have um, a lot of activation happening very soon. So uh, we will have the lunations and uh, let's see what you can expect. Libra. Don't forget any planets in Libra is getting that square from everything in Capricorn, everything in Cancer and Aries. So <sighs> maybe a larger community can help you. Mm, Libra. Uh, let your friends help you. Spirits telling me that you know, go out more. Uh, associate with groups you've not associated with for a while, maybe from the past, or maybe just new random people who like doing something you like doing. That is very possible. Okay. Now I'm moving on to uh, Scorpio. Okay, so we just had a new moon in Scorpio, of course. So it was your first house, the way you look. If you want to change it, it's a very good time for you to do so. Make set your intentions. If you work with the lunar cycles, manifestation becomes that much easier. So if you want to look a certain way, if you want to speak a certain way, if you want to take your life in a new direction, this new moon Scorpio for you is very, very powerful. And it's going to there'll be a full moon in Taurus, your polarity. And uh which is going to be on the 12th of November. Uranus is sitting, of course, in your polarity, Scorpio in your seventh house. So changing the way you see your relationships, actually. Completely changing the way you see your relationships. So Venus is moving into your second house of money soon this month, as upcoming November. Yeah, it's going to be crazy. And um, Mars is in your 12th house in Libra. And Mars is going to move into Scorpio, assign Mars rules according to traditional astrology. So Mars moving into Scorpio is going to be a big change. It could be malefic depending on the placement of your Mars. But overall you will get a lot of energy. And you will be able to get a lot of things done. So Scorpio, waste no time. Time is yours. Ace of Wands, a new creative idea that comes to you and and you feel like this this beautiful princess and you want to go out and execute this I idea okay aces are new beginnings wants a creativity maybe take up something do something change your excuse me line of work anything okay but some change something new is beginning and of course new moons are the start of something new so scorpio i chose for you the god death which is your god See how archetypes speak to us. See how the Tarot speaks to us. This is what I tell all my clients. That when we start working with the Tarot, the cards just start speaking to us. They just start communicating. Because um, you may look at look upon this like with their spirits in there. And Mercury is going to retrograde. So for you, the it's, it's so powerful. Death and ending. Something must end. But something beautiful is waiting to be born something must end so something to consider over there right what is it that needs to go so you can start again you can start anew right? ah. and if you're thinking about someone you've met someone recently or if you're in a relationship and you want to take the next step then spirit urges you 
that yes you go ahead because this person could very well be the one i'm not saying there won't be problems there won't be breakups but with the one you all things always work out the way they are meant to work out they always um the pain grows us the sadness grows us the joy grows us everything it's it's a growing process non-stop sagittarius eight of wands travel wow look travel a swift action whatever was stagnant will now start moving with venus in your sign Yay! but don't forget that mercury is going retrograde in your 12th house so that could bring up a lot of uh, psychic energies for you a lot of messages from spirit and you know connection with your ancestors uh, a lot of stuff's going on and uh, mars will move into your 12th house so dredging some real deep stuff over there okay so where is that card let me spit out eight of wands very nice very happy you got that wow high priest is the god of pisces okay it's to me the high priest is the pisces it's always about listening to your intuition you're you are the most spiritual sign in the fire element so this is about you really growing spiritually and listening to your intuition don't forget jupiter is going to move out of your sign soon so your ruler is going to move into your second house of money and all this stuff is going on in capricorn it's your second house of wealth and resources so you are probably seeing um a change a huge change in your financial structure something you've never seen before honestly and it's scary, if you ask me. It's very, very scary. But don't think for a moment that it is not necessary. Past life relationships. Relationship is coming back. Or if you are thinking about someone and I pick this card, it means that this person you're thinking of is like, you know, a lover for many incarnations. Someone you cannot necessarily forget someone who is very very close to energy signature almost like a twin flame okay moving on to capricorn yo this is like the year of capricorn so what's going on with you how have you been uh well things are the venus and all this was happening of course in your 11th house so Oh wow, God of Leo, strength. And it's about taming the beast within and strength. Okay, I know it's Halloween and usually I do black hats, but I'm gonna show you my Leo, who will probably throw the, make a mess of the video, but I'm gonna show up. Yay, that was wonderful. Right, you made a mess of my video, did she? Okay. Framing, back to framing. Okay, all right, perfect. Sorry for the uh, diversion. Strength, Capricorn. Think of what Leo means to you. And uh, if there's somebody who's Leo in your life and where that is going. Take some time away, Capricorn. Take some time away for yourself and uh, for greater introspection because this is the card of Virgo. And Virgo's your 11th house. It's a good house for you. But I think this needs needs some kind of solitary contemplation. So Virgo and Leo. Okay, Capricorn. Virgo and Leo. Now, um, you've got a lot of foundations are changing for you. Because Aries is your 4th house. So over there, we've got a complete lead a breakdown of your family and how you were with your family or how if things have changed a lot of wounds have surfaced a lot of the way you deal with the wounds is probably also changed because Chiron gives you the medicine that you need to heal the wound so yeah over there and of course let us not forget that um, in your fifth house you have Uranus so someone online can um, can be enamored by someone online and Finally, it's about uh, a moment of introspection 
and finally discovering you have the strength maybe to approach them and speak with them or you know do something you've always wanted to do some of you this is a clear indication that don't walk away from what you've already spent so much time honing give your relationship a second chance okay now we've got Aquarius 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 beautiful Aquarius so what can we expect for you tons of changes with you uh, because you know, Uranus is in your fourth house again Aquarius so it's gonna change you'll have the lunation now in your fifth house that's gonna be pretty good for you now the north node in your sixth house is working for you that would be very important it could uh, give you answers to your illnesses knight of wands so someone who's fire sign but cruel and sadistic is in your life and is giving you lots of passion but maybe burning you out also okay and uh, oh sorry not knight king of wands Sorry, a mature fire sign person who's quite high rank. I see that that kind of energy, helping energy, okay? Bossy, nevertheless, but helping energy, Aquarius. And you are the anti authoritarian. But I want you to take a step back. And this is so beautiful because I have picked the faith card, yes. And I was like dying to pick the faith card. Where is it? Okay, so if you have any queries about your partner and if they're cheating, then don't forget that they are not. Spirit is telling you this. This card is a card of fidelity. So if usually anybody comes to me with a query about their love life and I pick this uh, and they want to know if, you know, is my partner cheating on me? No, they're not. Faith is um, very beautiful. Okay, faith and... You have to reassess the meaning of loyalty if you're feeling like, you know, the person's online or too much on their phone or, you know, maybe texting somebody else, what's going on? Because faith, um, faith is the first of the theological virtues along with the sister, hope and charity. She represents the importance of spiritual and romantic commitment. So if you've been wondering if you need to commit, then, you know, this card is telling you queries that maybe you need to commit. Okay? Done. Past life relation. With this Scorpio month and Halloween and Pucha Durdashi and all of this. The Les de la Muerte and all of that. We have Les de la Muerte. And I hope I did not uh, destroy the pronunciation. Pisces. And what's going on? for me to start telling you what what is happening but yeah something beautiful is happening Pisces because um right ace of wands and Scorpio got ace of wands on if you ask me and um this is a new beginning in your creative endeavors a lot of changes are happening for you, a lot of the way you interact and uh, don't forget Chiron is in your second house of income so this definitely means and Uranus is in your third house of communication so you're probably doing something online and you're know, trying to set your business which is glorious and Ace of Wands is, is you honing that business with some new ideas now, that's what I see the world, a beautiful completion, Pisces. Success, success is yours, totally, okay? Now, the romance department, we can't forget that. Keep an open mind. Don't label anybody. 
uh, don't say that person's great and I'm going to be with them or don't say that that person's not good and not going to be with them. Uh, what Spirit wants you to do right now is keep an open mind, Pisces, about your love, about everything, okay? And uh, see, Cancer is your fifth house and you've got the North Node in Cancer. So definitely a new romance is coming your way if it's already not come. For most of my Pisces clients, yeah, something big is happening. Definitely, definitely something big is happening. And um, and we've just had all this happening in the 11th house, Scorpio. So, yeah. It's going to be nice and interesting. And let's see where it leads us. So I hope you liked that reading. Like, comment, subscribe, share, and let me know what you think. Thank you.